And we are back. Our first guest tonight is here to chat about Bellingraph Gardens, the beautiful nationally acclaimed gardens that sit right at the foot of Alabama. And we're going to be talking about some of the amazing events and shows that they're going to be putting on during the holidays, as they always do. Please welcome Ms. Sally Erickson. Sally, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you do at the gardens. Well, I'm in charge of making sure that everyone knows about our events going on. Okay, and how did you come into that line of work? Well, it just kind of fell together. Um, they had an opening and uh, I applied and uh, I've really enjoyed it. I've been there almost five years. Oh, wow. Um, so everybody kind of knows about Bell and Graf Gardens for their big, big shows at Christmas time. Right. I've been there. But they actually do other things as well, right? Right. We have events um, all year long, and we have blooms and beauty every day of the year. Um, I think a lot of our guests who come down um, to Gulf Shores, say, in the wintertime, the snowbirds mm -hmm. are always surprised at how many beautiful blooms we have in January and February, for example. Yeah, and, and well, what's interesting is, is is I didn't realize that so much went into the timing of making things bloom when they actually do bloom. Right. <laughs> uh, and I really didn't learn about it until until ha having the opportunity to go to the Masters one year. And what they actually do is, I guess, they ice the plants to keep them at a certain you know certain temperature, and then they remove it, and then they bloom. Do you guys have oh, to yes, do things absolutely. like that the same right. way? Right. The big thing for us is the Easter lilies. Okay. We have our own chiller, and we have to start chilling the um, bulbs in November and December. And every year, of course, Easter moves around, so we have to time it differently every year to make sure they're blooming for Easter. Now, the home has got some interesting history. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, yes. Um, the Bellingrats built the home in 1935, and it looks like they both just left to go on a drive. When you walk in, you see their original possessions. You see a lot of, uh, you, well, you just see a slice of history on the Gulf Coast in the 1930s. So it really is a neat place. So it, has it changed at all since then? Uh, or do, have you guys managed to preserve it in almost an identical form to what it was way back when? Oh yes, it's very, very similar. Um, about the only difference is um, we've upgraded the HVAC system. <laughs> Okay, well, there you go. Now, you guys are open daily. I know you guys, people, you're known for having the night stuff, but you guys have things that happen during the day, too, yeah? Right, right. And right uh, in um, uh, this time of year, the, the flowers are really pretty. So I encourage people to come in the late afternoon because then for one ticket price, you can also see Magic Christmas and lights. The lights come on at 5. So um, if you come at 4, say, you can walk through the gardens and enjoy the blooms and then enjoy the holiday light show. So you actually get the best of both worlds I think so, in, yes. in that context. Now, uh, you guys have had some famous folks who've come through the through since 1932. What, what can you throw some names out there? Well, um, it's been a little while. Um, we did have some movie stars come. Um, we've had Diane Sawyer perform mm -hmm. on the Great Lawn, and that was, I believe, in 1991. The um, now you guys are famed nationally for your Christmas light shows. Tell us about that and what you've got going on this this Christmas season. Yeah, Magic Christmas and Lights. This is our 24th year to do it. It's a very large light show throughout the 65 acres, and uh, they start hanging it. Uh, around Labor Day weekend, and it's all made in Alabama. This is designed and built by our staff and maintained by our staff. So it's really special and it's unique to a garden setting, I think. And um, we're just really proud of it. It usually brings in a lot of visitors and it's always a lot of fun. Um, now, you guys have different programs throughout the year um, and, and outside of just the famous garden and holiday shows. Um, can you tell us about some of those? Well, we have a series of seminars in January and February called Winter Wednesdays, and okay. most of those are during the day, but we've also added some night programming. We have uh, stargazing twice a year on the Great Lawn. Lots of folks enjoy that. We will have professors come in from South Alabama who will talk about what you're going to see, the constellations, possibly a few comets here and there, and uh, then we go out and we look in, through giant telescopes on the Great Lawn, and that's a lot of fun. In the summer, we also have the Wonderful Wednesday series. We also have an Easter egg hunt. We have a car show in April, and um, then in the fall, we have Boo at Bellingrath, which is geared toward children, trick-or-treating in the gardens. Lots of fun. That's cool. So, yeah, because I know they do that at, like, some of the zoos. They have kind of like a Boo at the Zoo thing, so Boo at the Garden kind of right, makes, right. makes sense. What kind of, I've always wondered this myself, what kind of staff does it take? I mean, because that's, that's a lot of ground to cover and a lot of things to make perfectly pretty at all times, right? Oh, yes, yes. So what kind of staff does it take 
to maintain such a massive endeavor? Well, it's um, usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 people tops. Um, out of that, um, maybe seven main gardeners. Each gardener has maybe one or two assistants. They um, have segmented the gardens out to kind of keep things under control. And then um, we have the office staff. Um, we, we, are, we are a pretty lean operation, I must say. What do you guys do when you have unusual weather events? Like, okay, so for example, okay, we, we're on the Gulf Coast, so you gotta worry about hurricanes, obviously. Yes. Um, and then you've got other issues where you have I mean, it seems like now will be it'll be 80 degrees one day and 27 the next. Um, how do you guys manage the crazy changes in temperatures on the Gulf Coast? And, 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 and well, let's go with that first. Well, sure. Um, we don't do a great deal of management because um, I think the mindset is um, this is the way the gardens look from the Bellingrass lived here. And we want to kind of let the plants fend for themselves, so to speak, because um, that these are old growth azaleas and camellias that have been there for decades. So um, uh, plants have to be kind of tough to make it at Bellingrath. They do a lot of switching out. If something doesn't look up to par, it goes out and new plants come in. So I think that's part of the reason that they don't do a lot of pampering. Because you can replant, you right. just acquire something because the plants are germane to this area anyway. Right. So it's not like you are trying to force some tropical thing into a non-tropical place like I've tried to do with some of my palm trees that don't make it every year. Right. Well, we did have um, a pretty bad frost a couple of Januarys ago with some of the palm trees looking kind of bad for a few months, but most of them came back. So plants on the Gulf Coast tend to be pretty resilient, which is great. Um, what about things like hurricanes and stuff like that? How do you guys prepare for those? Oh, we have a game plan. We have uh, shutters that are made to cover all of the windows of the home, and um, we um, try to take everything down that could move around. And the things most people do on the Gulf Coast, um, we don't do anything really dramatically differently. Um, the main thing is making sure that the gardens are still safe and ready to go and reopen as soon as possible. So um, we'll have you know quality control going and make sure that there aren't any low hanging limbs or anything like that. Anything that could fall, break, right? And anything along those lines become trip hazards, things I know about. Right. Um, the, um, uh, and, and, you, and you guys also have uh, a greenhouse there, right? And some fountains and... A lot of green... Uh, well, yes, the conservatory in the Rose Garden, that has a lot of tropical plants in it. And um, it has made it through storm after storm, knock wood. So um, we're, I think the gardens were built pretty tough, pretty much. So um, a lot of communities do have you know, botanical gardens and things along those lines. Uh, can you tell us, I mean, what you think like the importance of places like this are to local communities? Well, gardens um, really, uh, I think for your mental health, there's just nothing better than walking through a garden. So for that sense only, I think Bellingrath is a wonderful legacy. Um, but one of the nice things to know about it is the Bellingraths were very wealthy people. Mr. Bellingrath was Mobile's first Coca-Cola bottler. And they could have left this to their heirs, but they chose to open it up to the public. And they wanted the public to enjoy what they built on the banks of the Fowl River in South Mobile County. So I just think that that in and itself is a great gift and a great legacy. And those of us who work there really appreciate that. Well, I know that, that on more than one occasion, I've taken my family out there you know, during the Christmas holiday season to see the lights and walk through and, and everything else. Um, how can people find out more about the gardens and the ticket pricing and the hours and so on and so forth? Is there a social media website or something that you can tell us about? We'll post it right here. Oh, that'd be great. Yes, um, <laughs> we have bellingraph.org. That's our website. You can buy tickets on uh, for Magic Christmas and Lights on the website. Um, I wanted everyone to realize, though, that if you buy a ticket on the website, it has a date on it. That does not mean it's set in stone. If your plans change, the ticket is still good through the end of December. Um, and uh, normally, people buy for the rest of the year, as opposed to Magic Christmas and Lights, people just buy tickets when they arrive. Um, and then um, we have a very active Facebook page, and we also have a pretty active Twitter account, and we're semi-active on Instagram. We try to post on all of these platforms, and uh, people seem to especially enjoy the history posts. That's always fun. Sally, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, David. We'll be right back.